Uh, it's Tabletop Tuesday over at my tower, and we have some gaming to do. Sure, we all look like an odd bunch, but despite our differences, we all agree on one thing. You can never have enough stone ruins to fill up the table. <coughs> oh god, oh help. Hello folks, and welcome to Dice Chatter. My name is Donnie, and today we are going to create a number of ruined stone buildings. For some reason, going through my terrain pile, I am missing these absolute staples for the tabletop. I figured why not build some that just about any novice crafter can create. So enough of this introduction, let's jump right into the build. Of course, right off the bat, you need to gather up some supplies. A good cutting mat, I use a proxon for all my foam cutting, foam of course, lots of it, various glues, glue gun, a knife, and you always need the crafter. <laughs> oh, you dingus. With a proxon, the foam cutting process is pretty simple. Obviously, it just takes a little bit of time. The goal here is to create so many foam bricks that I can place each one down individually on each stone ruin. I decided to try out three brick sizes. They should pop up on the screen now. I feel with this variation of sizes we can get a good looking shambled and personal touch for each ruin we create. Also, once you have cut up a number of bricks, throw them in a container filled with rocks and stones, shake it about, and you will get some nice variation between each individual brick as well. For the main base or structure of each ruin, I just use some one inch thick insulation foam and make sure to give it some pizzazz as well as a smooth edge or two. At the moment, I am marking out where the walls will go on this ruin and we will touch on that now. The walls themselves are pretty simple. I use some chipboard to act as a guide. Keep in mind that when we start laying bricks over the chipboard, it will be covered up entirely. And of course, these are going to be ruins, so no need to make any perfect cuts when crafting up these walls. Once I am happy with the shapes, I use a hot glue gun to put the walls in place, and then we are ready for the most arduous step of the build, laying down each individual brick. Now take some time, but I promise you it will look good at the end of the day. So sit up straight, do your little thingy exercises, and prepare for the long haul. Alright, it really doesn't take hours upon hours. I only ended up making six ruined sections today, and I'd say the total time for this process was probably around three or so hours. Going about this step is super simple. I use some tacky glue and just start throwing down bricks that I think would look neat in that spot. I try to keep the larger stones near the corners and the base of the building, and the smaller stuff I plastered really anywhere I felt like. Again, these are ruins. Maybe leave a spot or two without bricks, or maybe have some barely hanging on to the stone structure. This is your time to be truly creative and make these ruins your own. And by the end of it, you can really start seeing the build, well, come together. I like to call this next phase of the build, the goop step. Here we have a concoction of water, standard PVA glue, place hand mix, and some black primer. For the consistency of the goop, it should look like a good pudding as you can see here. Obviously not pudding you want to eat. This goop is what will fill in those large cracks on the ruin as well as add more detail to the build. The sand size variation of the play sand mix will give the paint more interesting spots to latch onto, the PVA will keep it all intact and protect the terrain build itself, the water will make the consistency actually workable, and the primer I added, well, you probably don't need it here at this step. Despite that fact, go crazy with the goop and spread it all over each ruin you are creating. A side note as well, while the goop has dried or is very close to being dried, I took a paper towel and ran it across each wall and floor. This is to quickly remove any larger or loose, especially loose, sand pebbles that are still attached to the build. So once all your goop has dried, we are just one step away from painting. The Mod Podge and Prime step is pretty self-explanatory, but I do want to mention something here while I work. When you add Mod Podge to your ruins, I'd suggest thinning it down a little bit with water. This will help protect your terrain build, but also make sure that you will still get that needed variation between each brick you laid down. So after you podge the build up, you prime it black, and then we move on to painting. I personally like to incorporate simple and easy to use techniques while painting. 
especially with terrain. Mostly everything you see me do here will be dry brushing with a touch of washing over some spots of the build. I wanted to keep my stones gray with various other colors splashed in, and I also wanted the sections of rubble to be more earthy colored. I work with my darkest colors first and dry brush those more heavily over the ruins, and eventually work my way up to the lighter shades. These I carefully and lightly go over the build. I don't want the shade variation to be too stark and look weird on the tabletop. Also, add some other wild colors. I use orange green and some brick red over various spots. Like I've said in previous builds, earth and stone are not just gray and brown. You gotta mix it up a little and splash in some other colors for fun and realism. And to finish off the painting process, I use a mix of green and brown inks, mixed in with some matte medium of course, to add in some needed weathering to the stones. This will help show that these ruins have been here for quite some time. And after we let all that dry, we move on to the final step of the creation. Now I generally don't like to flock my terrain builds because I like each piece to be usable in any gaming environment, whether it be a lush forest or a frozen tundra, but I wanted to spice these ruins up. Similar to the goop we created a few steps ago, I did the same thing with some clump foliage from Woodland Scenics, green tea leaves straight from the bag, water, and PVA glue. The dry ingredients I threw in a little coffee bean blender to really chop them down, and then you mix it in with all your wet ingredients. Then you have to take this new green goop and shove it all around the ruins. Also, be sure to add in some varying grass tufts in the cracks and crevices of the build, and at this point, I would call this creation complete. There you have it folks, the simple stone ruin. I am just really happy I took the time to build these terrain pieces. It's rare to show up to a table where models are being pushed around in intense combat and not see some stone ruins. I hope you all enjoyed the build and I'd love to see your own personal creations. Hop on over to the Discord to share your work and chat with me and some very nice people. Also, don't forget to do all the other socials, comment, like, and subscribe. It truly, truly does help out the channel more than you know. Until next time, folks, I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.